This also means, and again, Allah knows best, all of this is kind of sort of deriving. And it's very terrifying in light of what is happening right now. And this is an interpretation. That the forces of good and the forces of evil will begin to demarcate before the coming of the Dajjal and before the coming of the Mahdi. Because there's already wars going on and there is no Dajjal. There's already fighting taking place and the Dajjal has not yet come. But the land, or sorry, the land, not the land, the situation is being prepared for the coming of the Dajjal. So it appears that there will be skirmishes, major wars, bloodshed. In some ahadith it is mentioned out of 199 will die. So what happiness will the survivor have? When will that happen? With the Dajjal or before the Dajjal? We do not know. We do not know. There was going to be a massive war. The Prophet ﷺ said that the bird that is flying above will fall down dead. Is this nuclear war? Something like this. Again, these are all ahadith that it's not too far-fetched to read in nuclear war. Right? As Einstein famously remarked, I don't know what World War III will be uh, fought with, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. It's a very profound statement. I don't know what World War III is going to be fought with. But whatever it is fought with, that's it, that will be the end of civilization. Because too much nuclear power is too much what not. World War IV, if there ever is one, will be with sticks and stones. And by the way, this also goes to another issue. These are hadith about horses in the time of Dajjal. These are hadith about swords and what not. Do we take them literally? Allah knows. Both opinions are valid. And it is permissible to call a weapon a sword. And maybe there are some fancy weapons and whatnot. And it is also not unfeasible, not unrealistic to assume that towards the end of times, all technology as we know it will be gone. And the only way that we can imagine this to happen is a real and true Armageddon. You know, there is this genre of movies. Not that I'm encouraging you to watch movies, I'm just telling you this is the reality. There's this genre of movies that, you know, the apocalypse happening, or what's going to happen after the nuclear explosion. And in almost all of them, what do we see? Common sense logic dictates that when this whole world goes to war, next time may Allah protect us, and nuclear weapons are used everywhere, what is going to happen to civilization? It's gone. We're going to be back to sticks and stones. We're going to be back to lighting fires with not even matches, but rubbing things together. Like we're going to go back to that time frame. So it is not inconceivable at all to interpret these ahadith literally that the Dajjal and his followers and the Muslims and the Mahdi will literally be fighting on horses and, and, and swords and whatnot because all of that will be gone. Or to be metaphorical is also possible. All of this is, I mean, it's not too much of a stretch as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows um, best. So this, these are some ahadith about the Dajjal. And obviously, and obviously the issue of uh, Dajjal uh, coming towards the end of times, our Prophet said, he shall live 40 amongst you, that famous hadith. He shall live 40 amongst you. How much 40? He said, one of them will be like a year. One of them will be like a month. One of them will be like a week and the rest will be like your regular days. Okay, the rest will be like your regular days. So you can calculate what is this going to be? One year plus one month plus one week plus all of the rest of them will be regular days. Now what does this mean? Again, remember the ahadith of the end of times are cryptic. Always. The slave shall give birth to her master. What does it mean? Barefoot, naked shepherds are going to compete with tall buildings. Is it literally barefoot and naked or their ancestors were barefoot and, and shepherds? Because as we said, these princes, they are not barefoot and, and, and shepherds anymore, but their grandfathers were. Again, a little bit of crypticism, Allah knows best. So what does it mean the first day will be like a year? Does it mean that it will actually be one year? And so the time frame of the Dajjal will be one year, one month, one week, and 37 days? Or does it mean that time will appear to go slow? Nuclear weapons, Armageddon, Allahu Alam. Does it mean that everything will just appear like that for a long time frame? Allahu Alam. The famous hadith in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, and this shows us the status of salah. When we hear these hadith, our minds goes here and there. So when the Sahaba heard it, the first thing they said, Ya Rasulullah, how do we pray in that year that is a day? 
Yani they are so much into salah, right? That the first thing their minds ask is, how do we pray in that year that's going to be a day or that day that's going to be a year? And our Prophet ﷺ said, you estimate it. You estimate it. So, uninterpretation, and this is all ijtihad, uninterpretation is that there will be no sunlight for a year. So it will appear that for one full year, it is as if it's a day and night. And that's why our Prophet ﷺ said, you keep on estimating the times of salah. You keep on estimating the times of salah, even if you don't see the sun and the moon. This is uninterpretation. And the only way that there will be no sunlight all over the world is once again, if these weapons of mass destruction, the irony is the very country that claimed others have weapons of mass destruction, is itself guilty of having the worst weapons of mass destruction. And as it accused others falsely and invaded others falsely, this is a complete tangent as you can see, as it accused others falsely and invaded others falsely, it is the only country in human history that has used the nuclear weapon against innocent civilians in the uh, cities of, which ones? Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The irony of ironies. They get to accuse everybody as they go scot-free themselves. And this is the way of the Jabbar and the Mutakabbir. Anyway, so the point being, where was I? Talking about the, uh, the, uh, the one day. Allah knows best. A very valid interpretation, which I don't see to be unreasonable, that that year will be an actual year. It will be an actual year. 365 days, but people will not be able to recognize them as day and night. And then slowly but surely the smog will settle, what not, and so the next one will be like a month, that okay, things are clearing up, and then whatever might happen. So Allah knows, but this could be an interpretation where we can reconcile. Or time can go slow. I mean, Allah, ala kulli shayin qadir, and there's nothing yani, either way that we can do this. But we learn from this that the Dajjal will be on this earth for a period of time that is reasonable. It's not that much of a stretch. Even if we say 40 days, the first one of which is a year and then a month. So in total, it's less than two years, right? In total, it's less than two years, a year and a few months, right? uh, two months and something. That's not too long, alhamdulillah. Now, the Dajjal will be here, meaning he shall be Dajjal for that time frame. He will grow up, as we said, a regular child. He might not even know he's the Dajjal when he's growing up, or maybe he will, we don't know. One of the two. As the hadith mentions, he shall appear when someone provokes him. Which means in Isfahan, something's gonna happen, and he's just gonna go berserk and ballistic, and then realize he has these powers or jinns or shayateen that others don't have, and then take it from there, take advantage of that, and go from bad to worse, declare himself the Messiah, get his followers, eventually, go ahead and declare himself God himself and all of this is going to grow worse and worse and worse. So all of these are the hadith of the uh, Dajjal.